HP, get out of here. Dell, no one needs you. Acer, well, we've never really heard of you. Even in China, the first two of these brands are massive PC sellers. In fact, they are the two biggest in the entire country. But by mid-2024, the Chinese government wants to change that. Because government agencies, state-owned and state-backed businesses, are going to be ordered to stop using foreign branded PCs and software. According to a report by Bloomberg, this could mean the replacement of 50 million PCs. But, you know, not being in China and not having the ability to count 50 million PCs, I have no way to fully verify this number. So it's entirely possible the number is more of a uh, rough estimation than anything close to accurate. Now, this isn't the first time they've attempted to do this. There was actually an order back in 2019 to do the exact same thing. And the end date of that order was going to be late 2022. But considering there are still 50 million PCs to replace, they obviously weren't on track. This is now going to extend that date out into mid-2024. So even though we know this is happening... Why is it happening? Now, obviously, it's hard to know the exact reasons why something like this is going to occur, but there is some fairly reasonable speculation. One of those being making the country less reliant on foreign technologies. Take, for example, doing the opposite of the Huawei ban, where instead of blocking the import of these devices into countries like the US, you block the export of HP and Dell devices into a country like China. Sure, a lot of that manufacturing and assembling is done in China, but a lot of plants are starting to fire up in a lot of other countries. But given a few more years, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a far more diverse and widespread supply chain. Also trying to keep Chinese money inside of China funding Chinese businesses and the Chinese government, while also bringing in foreign money to sort of bolster up that economy. And lastly, strengthening the digital security of their agencies. Not to say that, you know, Inside threats are a problem, those are totally fine, but strengthening the security from outside threats. Now you might be thinking, if the computers are going to be replaced, obviously they have to be replaced with something. Firstly, we need to deal with the brand. And maybe I'm dumb. Maybe I'm just dumb for not realizing this. I didn't realize that Lenovo was a Chinese brand. Lenovo is the biggest brand in China right now, and one of, if not the biggest PC brands in the entire world. There are smaller brands like Founder and Inspire, which do have some level of foothold, but I wouldn't be surprised if most of those government contracts just go to Lenovo and they become even bigger than they are right now and become the undisputed biggest PC brand in the entire world. And with manufacturers like Foxconn, who are probably more than happy to help out with local production, getting all of those PCs made doesn't exactly seem that difficult. Sure, we're in the middle of a chip shortage, but it's entirely possible that Foxconn would turn away other projects just to help out with this local Chinese government project. Secondly, you have to deal with the operating system because if you want to get rid of Western software, you certainly cannot be running Windows. And building an operating system is very, very difficult. And rather than building something entirely from scratch, they plan to use a Linux-based operating system. It's entirely unclear what would be the primarily endorsed distro, but there are some fairly long-standing Chinese distros that exist. Things like Ubuntu Kylin, Deepin, or even Red Flag Linux. And from my limited understanding, Red Flag in many ways is similar to Red Star. That's not just like a similar name for the sake of it. So I am very excited to see the Red Star of China. Is it going to be full of spyware? Almost certainly. But even so, I think it'd be fun. And considering the prior Western replacements like, say, Harmony OS on Huawei devices, if it's not one of the existing distros and it is something entirely new, it's probably just going to be something that already exists, like, say, regular Ubuntu with some minor, minor tweaks. And maybe that encourages Lenovo to start shipping more devices with Linux pre-installed. Obviously not with the Chinese variant, no one in the West is going to buy that, but maybe with Ubuntu or maybe with, you know, Debian or something like that, I think that would be really, really cool. I'm sure specific departments are being forced to use specific distros, that makes total sense. But as a widespread change, that's not what is occurring. 
Also, Windows isn't going to be fully removed anyway, because right now there are already businesses to get special permits to make use of hardware and software that otherwise they wouldn't be allowed to use. So there's going to be cases where there's no way to get rid of Windows or no sort of productive way to get the work done where they will just keep using what they were using anyway. The third challenge is dealing with the software on these devices, which a lot of articles talking about this sort of describe this as the biggest challenge. Dumping Adobe, dumping Microsoft, dumping Autodesk, and dumping all of the other proprietary software that makes the corporate world go round. And I kind of find this problem laughable because there's no need to build new software completely from scratch, like how Linux already exists, you can make use of existing open source software, tools like GIMP, tools like Inkscape, Caden Live, LibreOffice, FreeCAD, Blender is a different exception which already has corporate acceptance, but all of these other projects already exist. Now I'm not going to sit here and tell you that all of these projects are perfect, they are just drop and replacements for what is already being used in a corporate setting. That's kind of ridiculous, like a workflow being done in Word can't just be dropped into LibreOffice Writer and then work perfectly fine. But do you honestly think that if literal billions of dollars are being dropped into new hardware, that not a single cent is going to be spent improving the software side? There is nothing inherently wrong with any of these projects. The reason why something like GIMP is not competitive with Photoshop is because of a lack of developers and a lack of money. If you give it both those things, it can do literally anything. Whether it's forking the projects, making a proprietary version, or working on the existing repos, either way, a lot of money is going to be dumped into improving this software. I would certainly like it if a lot of these changes do trickle upstream and make the software that I use considerably better, but, you know, being a realist, I'm not holding out that much hope in that happening. Because while China doesn't have any qualms about using free and open source software, following licenses is a whole nother challenge. But one thing not included in this order, probably because it's not really that realistic to develop, is locally developed hardware. So even though they're going to be using local PC brands and locally developed software or open source software, it's still going to rely on tech from companies like AMD, Intel, NVIDIA, and companies like that. Even if much of the production is done locally, it's still developed outside of the country. There are certainly some local hardware developers like Xiaojin, for example, but no one as prolific and no one making hardware as performant as what you get from the companies that you typically think of when thinking of PC hardware. These companies are producing far less volume and typically more low-end ARM-based CPUs, which in certain contexts are totally fine. But when we're talking about a desktop computer, don't exactly fit the use case. But if this order gets extended or there is a future order for local hardware, I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing a lot more reverse engineered x86 CPUs. 2024 seems like a really short window to make this replacement, so come 2024, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a further delay to like 2026 or 2027, but I will be very surprised if at some point in the future this replacement doesn't ultimately occur. And if some of those changes trickle back into Linux and trickle back into open source software, it's certainly a good thing for me. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you think this is going to happen? Do you think this is a good thing for Linux and open source software? I would love to know. If you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, starting barrel pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.